Writing in the Daily Dot, Liz Lenz asks the question, why does a woman's child get more likes than her professional accomplishment? Uh, we're going to talk to Liz about that today. Welcome to the show, Liz. Hi, thanks for having me on. <laughs> thanks for coming thanks. on. So tell us about, uh, your, about uh, your, your experience posting your work accomplishments on Facebook versus posting pictures of your kids. Well, I had my first child um, five years ago, just a little over five years ago. And uh, I found that from the moment I posted the we're pregnant on Facebook, uh, that I was suddenly getting tons more likes um, than I had ever gotten before. Before then, I was just a just a married lady working a writing job. <laughs> I guess it wasn't that interesting running races. I don't know. Uh, I thought my life was great. And then I had a child and then my social media likes and shares went through the roof. And, um, and then, you know, when she was born again, likes and shares for those, um, those posts uh, would always just have so much more engagement than, you know, maybe a link that I would share. And even if I posted, you know, like a little funny thing my daughter did versus, you know, some, uh, a little announcement about my career, you know, so even if they were, it was plain text to plain text, status update to status update, there would still be more likes on what my child did than, you know, what I had done, which is fine. I also find my children more interesting than I am, but... <laughs> But I also work online and I'm just constantly bombarded by uh, people accusing parents of posting too much about their children and posting too much about, you know, I guess the the, the fruit of our uteri. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so you, that kind of that kind of double standard really bothered me. And I've always wondered, like, who are these people who hate me so much? Because they're always clicking like on my stuff, so I don't. So, so your your point about like something that you wrote that was funny versus a picture, like you're you're making that point right. because you know we're like we're biologically programmed often to like think a baby is cute. So there's there's that idea that you know even if you're like oh, I'm sick of hearing everything about your kid, like there's people still clicking like on pictures and text. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah, and I understand the the urge to just click like on a picture. I mean, Lord love them. Sometimes babies look terrible, and <laughs> you know, I'll like be scrolling through my feed and see a picture of a baby. I'm like, oh mercy, okay. Like, Sympathy you know? like, yeah. Sympathy like, but it's a baby, you know. So, but uh, so I get that urge, but I also think you know when you compare apples to apples, you know, I've shared photos of beautiful illustrations that people have done for like an essay that I wrote, um, you know, which I, and you know, it's gotten like zero engagement versus, you know, just a picture, a terrible blurry picture of, you know, my child running around with his diaper on and everybody's like, yay. How, how much engagement were you getting before you had, had your baby? Uh, you know, that's so funny. Uh, I, I think that's really hard to compare, but yeah, uh, you know, because Facebook always does that this day in history and or, or you know, the, the flashback, the milestones. Mm -hmm. um, my engagement was terrible. <laughs> so I get to relive that every and I've been on <laughs> I've been on Facebook since uh, my sophomore year of college. So I've got a lot of history there to go through and see how how terrible I was at engagement before I had babies. Yeah, my, my experience has been that I I've. I've always found it confusing both to me and to like my close friends to have the kind of lines cross, right? Like, and we've talked about this on the show plenty of times, my Facebook feed, I keep it locked down. I keep it pretty private to people who know me really well or my family or my friends, because in the beginning I kept it wide open. And I found that anytime I talked about technology or whatever, like I got to the point where my actual friends were like, God, I, I think I have to like unfriend you because I just don't care about that stuff. So you're and, making the, the, these point as a man that the same thing happens to you when, when you talk about your work, uh, you don't get I certainly had that experience and, and it changed how I used Facebook because I was like, well, I don't want, want my true friends to go away. And actually it would be kind of nice to have a service that is just for my personal stuff so that I don't feel like I'm putting too, too much of myself out there. Uh, on the flip side of that, I also think that people who are fans of work of someone who, who like follow someone because of their professional career and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think that they, they 
see something like someone having a baby or, you know, these life events that have nothing to do with their career. And they see that as kind of humanizing that person a little bit more. And that connection can motivate them to, to get involved as well. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if that's what's happening here, but I, I know that about myself sometimes. Like I see someone, you know, on a social network that I'm used to following in a very specific, like scientific or techn technology sort of way. And suddenly there's this human event I'm almost guaranteed to like be like, yeah, that's awesome. You're human too, you know? <laughs> I think that's really true, Jason, because I keep my personal and my professional personas kind of separate. I mean, I have work friends on my personal Facebook, but I have like a public Facebook. And if I publish anything there, I published something of like playing guitar the other day and the engagement level, Facebook gave me a notice that said, this post is performing, you know, seven times better than all the rest of the stuff that you actually care about that you make money off of. Right. <laughs> so I think maybe just it was, maybe there's also that element of just the personal stuff is yeah. is really fits the um, the medium. And, and I think, you know, I'm sort of guilty as charged. I definitely am a serial baby liker. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I, I, I often don't take the time to read the article. I have a lot of friends who are journalists. I don't, I'm like, oh gosh, I can't, I, can I like this? Do I, do I know what this says? Is this like, um, you know, about, st you don't want to like something and then have it turn out that that wasn't sort of the thing to do, you right. know, because it's much more complex. Um, Liz, my question is, you know, so much of what we see online that causes um, engagement, I'm thinking specifically of Farmville, is this idea idea of social obligation. Like, uh, you know, if I give you two plants, then you've got to give me two plants. And if I like your baby, you'll like my baby. I mean, I kind of wonder if there's this weird scorekeeping. Do you think there's something around that? Uh, yes, I know there is. I think if, um, especially if you get really, really dark into Facebook, you know, your soul kind of goes a little blacker. I think people really keep track of that on maybe <laughs> some people keep track of that and there is this kind of sense of um well oh they didn't like this picture they didn't like this picture i personally don't go through and see who liked this or who didn't like this um i did for this talk i did search back through my feed to kind of see gender breakdowns of who liked what more often but um you know, I, I think maybe on some level people might be keeping track, you know, at least subconsciously. But I also think that um, that it is that human element. And, um, and, and also, I actually don't think it's necessarily problematic that we love these uh, human sides of one another, right? Like that we love to see our babies running around naked or, you know, the posts about the silly things our kids say. I, I don't think that that's necessarily what the problem is. The problem is, is that there's this feedback loop that's coming back from somewhere that's saying, no, that's terrible. You know, I quoted a poll in my piece that said 57% of people find that really obnoxious. And that's the thing that really bothers me and I want to know where that's coming from because, you know, I'm fine with people sharing about their lives. I think it's great. You know, I, I have my life and my career have always been very complicated and entwined together because I, I write about my life and that is my career. So it's very, you know, where's the line? I don't know. I'm a millennial, you know, so. <laughs> 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 so, but like, but, but that feedback loop that keeps coming back, you know, with sites like get off my internet or STFU parents that it's saying like, this is terrible and this is awful. So why are we, and, and that judgment is coming down harder on women, I think, than men. Right. You rarely hear of a dad, like you post too many pictures of your kids, you know, no, no one really says that we're. Uh, I don't think that about you, by the way, Jason. <laughs> but but people don't say it. It's part of just the the internet anger that unfortunately comes down harder on uh, women often than men, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Sure. Um, so so did, did you look into it? Were there more men or women that were liking uh, your photos of kids versus your photos of work? And uh, did that represent your general Facebook community? Um, you know, I actually found more women liked my... Uh, career stuff more. And I don't know if that's just because I've recently become involved with a lot of uh, Facebook subgroups 
that are supportive of women and female writers. Um, I'm in a lot of these little groups and I love them. And so I've, I have a lot of friends from there. So I don't know if that's what that's coming from, but I do find a lot more men actually like my, my baby stuff than, uh, <laughs> than my, uh, than my career stuff too. So again, I'm not sure where that's coming from. I might have a, I might play better. My target audience might be more women also. So I don't know. That could have an effect. <laughs> Well, Liz, thank you so much for joining us. In addition to The Daily Dot, Liz writes for The Rumpus, and she's been a contributor to The New York Times, Motherload, Jezebel, and others. You can find her on Twitter at L-Y-Z-L. Thanks so much, Liz. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. Take care.